Back in October, our next guest called this the beginning of a new bull market. So here to share where he sees this market heading now is Alger CEO and CIO Dan Chunks. Good to see you. Thanks for coming by. Thank you. So S&P's up 21 percent since you made that call. I know you're probably feeling pretty good about yourself. <laughs> this is a what have you done for me lately business, though. Where are we going from here? Yeah. Uh, well, I think there's still uh, a lot of room to run and a lot of time to run. Uh, first quarter earnings about to come up. Uh, I think it was really interesting that we had good news in the economy in the jobs report. Uh, and unlike a couple of days ago, when people feared that might mean that, you know, Fed easing was off the table, the markets rallied and rallied quite strongly. I think it's a sign, actually, interestingly, that, you know, there's a strong fundamental underlying support for the market because the Fed is going to cut in coming year, years. And at the same time, the economy is, uh, you know, moving along well. And so that's a very positive combination for uh, corporate earnings. And market will follow that. Are we not as beholden to interest rates as uh, cuts as maybe we thought we were? Are we come around to the idea that stronger economy trumps rate cuts and we can deal with it for a while? Well, we've been in the camp that fundamentals trump everything. And rates, of course, can affect fundamentals. But at the position that we're in now, which was the bias is clearly to cutting, even if we're holding on hold for longer than perhaps the market thought, um, the bias is towards downward over the next couple of years. And so that's the positive support for the equities. OK, so it's it's as long as you know that the hiking trend is over and the new trend from the Fed is starting, that that's good enough. Yes. You were bullish large cap tech like NVIDIA, Am, uh, Amazon, Microsoft. So those stocks in your since your call in October have come a long way. Yeah. Like 70 percent for NVIDIA or more, I and think. You use, do you still like them or they come too far too fast? <laughs> so the good thing about NVIDIA and some of them is that their earnings and revenue growth is almost keeping up <laughs> pace with the stocks. Um, so they haven't gotten extreme in uh, valuation yet. And uh, but it's the opportune time now to also think about what will be the next beneficiaries of AI and as well as a strong economy. How are you doing that? What, what stands out to you? If, if a lot of money has been made, uh, the easy money, I should say, has been made in these names for the time being, where can I make the easy money now? Well, there's never any easy money. But um, I think actually AI is powerful enough that it's going to drive investment and therefore growth across multiple sectors. Um, but I'll give an example. In traditional media, uh, TV, movies, uh, there's a large percentage of costs that's in the, in the production and post-production. We see Netflix, for example, as an interesting AI beneficiary that people don't think about, um, but it's on the cost structure. They spend $18, $19 billion a year in producing their content. A lot of that production cost uh, could be uh, significantly reduced by AI. Do you believe in the broadening story? Uh, the broad, the broad, like uh, the broadening broad of the camp. market, the broad, broadening oh, of the market story. Yeah, ab absolutely. I mean, we, uh, uh, my partner Uncle Crawford here was earlier. I guess uh, now we're talking about the Fab Four instead of the Magnificent Seven. Right. I have a little bit of depth. I think I think the uh, the three that are getting dropped are still very good companies, but they're going through some transitions, uh, and that's Tesla, Google, uh, and Apple. Uh, I think they will be very strong players and benefit from AI, maybe in a little bit second stage, although whenever Tesla finally gets automated driving really nailed down, that's going to be a, you know, a singular moment. Um, uh, but um, yes, we see a broadening of the market uh, into other sectors. And uh, for example, uh, electricity demand is up a lot because the computing intensity of AI-driven uh, servers demands a lot of energy. Mm -hmm. and so, And uh, utilities, of course, have been far out of favor. We're not typically seen as utility investors, but we see some interesting opportunities uh, in utilities just because of the electrical demand. Interesting. I appreciate your time. Thanks for coming by. Thank you. That's Dan Chung here of Alger at uh, Post 9.